This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. The big monsters that they like to feed to Hogan. I think we're going to get this backstage skit next that you like. You want to hear Rona Barrett interview Miss Elizabeth? Yeah, it, it, it was. There was nothing that entertaining about it, but it's worth tracking. Track it. <laughs> oh, here, here we go. We're tracking. With me now, the First Lady of the World Wrestling Federation, the lovely Miss Elizabeth. Hello, Rona. Elizabeth, I must say, I've had the pleasure of interviewing some of the most glamorous stars in Hollywood, but some of them kind of pale by comparison to your beauty. You really are quite <laughs> stunning. Well, thank you, Rona. Elizabeth, we've missed you. Where have you been? You haven't nearly been as active in the World Wrestling Federation, and... Um, you seem to have disappeared altogether from ringside. What happened? Well, it's true that most of my participation in the World Wrestling Federation these days has been in an advisory capacity away from the ring. But why, Elizabeth? Your fans are really so disappointed. But that's precisely why I'm not as active. I don't want to disappoint my fans. I don't think I understand. Explain. Well, in the past, there were times at ringside when I could have physically helped, but I was afraid, and not afraid of getting hurt, but afraid of not being able to help enough, and thus, my fans would be disappointed. Elizabeth, I think your fans uh, would argue that your presence at ringside would be help enough. Well, you may be right, Rona. You know, lately I've thought of nothing else but returning to ringside, and if I ever do, you're going to see a far more active Elizabeth than you've ever seen before. Well, if you do... I personally will look forward to that. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, Miss Elizabeth. Nice Thank to you. see you. Nice Thank to be you. with you. And now back to you, Sean. That was fucking terrible. Wasn't it? it? And the only way it got worse is this. A Mr. Perfect's record. And I just have to say, it's pretty impressive. But you know something, Sean? No matter what this guy thinks, nobody's really perfect. Everybody has flaws. Everybody makes mistakes. And after this match is over, I think you'll agree that I severed his perfect record at a pretty good clip. <laughs> Cutting remarks from Brutus the Barber Beefcake. Here's what's great about this. <laughs> okay. In the promo, he's saying nobody's perfect. Everybody makes mistakes, but he's going to sever the perfect record. And he tries to clip the papers that Sean Mooney is holding mm -hmm. and the fucking heads clippers don't cut them. Mm. It's outstanding to me that we're trying. Nobody's perfect. Everybody makes mistakes like this one. Watch. I can't cut this fucking paper with my razor sharp shears. You're supposed to be scared of. Well, you know, the surprising thing about all that is that those are pre-tapes. Yeah. And, and they, I'm, I'm surprised that they use that one because they would many times they would redo pre-tapes over not, and over again. until they got them right? No. What that tells you is it was a Bruce Pritchard one. And he says, got it. That's enough. <laughs> Anybody got a doob? Who's got a doob? <laughs> Where's Roddy? He's probably got a doob. Oh, um, by the way, this is where years ago I first started my Brutus, the fucking barber beefcake bit that got everybody fired up because I still can't believe you've built all, you've got all of this equity built into Mr. Perfect years worth. He's never lost. And his first loss is not going to come to Hulk Hogan. His first loss is not going to come to the newly anointed ultimate warrior. Nay, nay. It's Brutus, the fucking barber beefcake. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Makes plenty of sense. No, it doesn't. Well, yes, it does. Tell me. Hulk Hogan. What? Hulk Hogan. They were buddies and I'm, I'm Hulk Hogan. Listen, Vince ruled things. Unlike, you know, what happened when Hogan went in WCW. But there were times that Vince would do things just to appease Hogan. And I have a feeling this was one of those. I don't want to hear that. Well, okay. Maybe not. I mean, you're probably it, right. And, uh, but, but somebody somewhere, God damn it. This Hulkster, he's got to be stopped. <laughs> this, we should have had him. We should have had this Mr. Perfect streak end 
with the ultimate warrior beating him, you know, let's really cement it now. Hey, he's undefeated. He's never lost. He just came off a, a fresh win over Brutus, the barber beefcake. And now he's going to take on the ultimate warrior. And I would have Mr. Perfect beat the ultimate warrior, uh, for the intercontinental title, not the world title. That would have been wow. cool. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our new podcast. We be booking. No, I'm just saying like you could have then had two real, it just feels like they never really went with Mr. Perfect and I never got why. Now we did do a long, a deep dive on Mr. Perfect with something to wrestle. And I discovered in my research that for whatever reason, Hulk Hogan versus Mr. Perfect was not a draw. Like whenever perfect was on top, it didn't draw. So, wow. And by the way, he's already, uh, he's already lost to the ultimate warrior here. It just hasn't aired yet. So it was a pre-tape and it was a match where, uh, you know, it's in the can. So he's technically been pinned, just hasn't made air yet. Man, look at the way he would sell just bouncy ball all over the place. You can see where uh, Dolph Ziggler gets some of his influence, huh? Yeah. And you can also see I, in, in many ways, uh, and I know he was wrestling at this time, but, uh, Sean Michael sold like that too. Oh, for sure. Those three are the, are, are always sort of mentioned in the same vein there. Right. Yeah. He'll sell this one, buddy. <laughs> yeah. You, you can tell the fans are really not into this Brutus, the Barber beef pick stuff. Although I thought it was pretty cool. I like the hedge clippers, man. I, I liked all that. By the way, uh, W Dwayne Lloyd wants to know if you'll start giving timestamps throughout the show. So can you just do that as often as you can remember? What's his name? Dwayne. Dwayne. Here's a Dwayne timestamp at 46, 27, 28. Is that good enough for you? Dwayne. Yeah, just do it as often as you can. Let's just annoy him with it. <clears throat> you know, one of our uh, biggest fans of listening to this podcast, Tony Khan, uh, told me that uh, he said, I don't listen to it much anymore because I don't have time to sit down and, uh, and watch the shows with you. Right. And I told him, and I'll tell everybody else, you don't necessarily need to watch the shows to enjoy this podcast. No. If you sweet. can't, you, a lot of people listen to it. In the car, they just listen to the banner back and forth and us talking about things. So, I mean, don't think that you've got to listen. You got to watch, do a watch along, watch along enhances it, but it doesn't, it's not necessary. And wait, who are you having this conversation with? Tony Khan. Yeah. That's not why he's not listening. Yeah. He's got too much to do. No, he doesn't like me. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, he's the only one that doesn't like you then. <laughs> no, we're, we're fine. Everything's okay. cool. I'm just busting balls. <clears throat> yeah, I know. Cause Which we, it's kind of what you do 95% of the time here. Well, you know, before he owned the second biggest wrestling company in the world, we would mm -hmm. text about wrestling a little more. Now, as you said, he's, uh, he's got his hands full. My God. I mean, running a wrestling company and a soccer organization and a football team and, yes. a, and a statistics company. And yeah. And I think he's got some, some Hollywood agent stuff he's doing. It's just, yeah, he's got a lot going on. Mary Tyler Moore has arrived. It's like she could be Lois's cousin. I know. <laughs> She's, uh, what a, what a star she was. Tony, yeah. do you have any all, you? old man words of wisdom? When, when, when are things going to be back to normal? I'm hoping by the middle of May. What makes you say middle of May? Do you have, I mean, is this just an old man, old man gun, gut feeling? No. Yeah. It's an old man gut feeling. Well, the middle of May, as you and I are talking right now is about six weeks away. And we have many people have been quarantined for two weeks. So I was thinking about two months, right? So eight weeks should be the middle of May. It was the middle of March when it started. That's what I'm hoping. But you know, in, in the society we live in, there's a lot of misinformation out there, right? And a lot of fear mongering. So who knows what's right? And what I, I just don't know. I can tell you this. If you are getting your, uh, news from social media, you're fucked. Where would you and recommend if, people get their news? 
I would go to news websites. Is there one in particular you would recommend? No, there's not. Just look around. I, uh, I wouldn't watch cable TV and I hate to say, cause my son works for a cable TV news company. I wouldn't watch that because you end up just listening to, uh, pundits, uh, rip the, uh, rip other parties and they, they get into politics. Just, I'll tell you what, uh, follow the world health organization, WHO, CDC, uh, follow those. That's what I suggest. So I, I, again, back to what your original question, I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. I, uh, I gotta tell you, I adjusted to the quarantine cause I've, I've self quarantined at this point by the time people are listening to this for more than two weeks. Uh, I had uh, food poisoning and got sick a couple of Mondays ago and, uh, missed work. And then the next day, you know, it was the, uh, you know what? Things are getting nuts. Maybe I should just work from home for a little bit. So as people are hearing this, I've been home for weeks and I'm adjusted and it's fine. You know, I'm not fussing, but it's just, you start to think about, man, there's a lot of, you know, and I've been fortunate. I've been able to work from home, but I got a lot of friends who are out of work now and you know, things are, things are weird in the world right now. And it's like, man, when will this get back to normal? I don't know, but I know there's a, there's a, a couple of my friends and I've been talking that eventually, eventually, uh, there's going to be anarchy and oh. I don't mean anarchy as far as what happens on the movies. I just think there's going to be a lot of people who'd be tired of it. And I don't, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but things are going to start to happen when I don't know. Now I, I, we have kind of. It's been very tough for me to Lowe's pretty much self quarantine. Now we will go to the, we will go to, uh, the grocery store and that that's about it. That's about all Lois has been going to grocery store. We'll go together. She won't go without me. And then of course I've been going out and doing wrestling on, you know, the middle of the week and coming back. So, but you're, my, you're, you're not, you're not flying. You're just hopping in a car and driving. That's right. Yeah. So I, I mean, we're okay, even though, you know, we're up. Uh, we're older Americans. We're not that age group yet, but we're older Americans. I think the age group they're talking about would be late seventies, eighties. Uh, we ain't there yet. Yet. Well, there it is. The streak is over and look at the fans. Unbelievably Brutus, the fucking barber beefcake just ended the perfect streak. Yeah, man. Can't believe it either, huh? Tony, cut his hair now? Not his hair. Hmm. I need to take a close look at this, but one of the cameramen here on this show is now the director of AEW dynamite hmm. and it's, it's, it's Tim. And I don't know which one Tim is here. It's not, I think it, Tim was a guy who jumped up on the apron of the ring right here. I'm just right there. I think that, I think that's right there. I think that's Tim with his back to us. Not sure. But Tim has been a long time in wrestling. One of the better ones and went on to, uh, be the director of, uh, Baltimore Orioles baseball for many, many years. And now he works exclusively for AEW. Great director. I guess we're going to cut, uh, Lanny Poffo's hair here, right? Yep. Hot damn. He's going to suck his own dick and then <laughs> we're going to have beefcake cut his hair. Oh no. He, no, he's trying to get out of the way. Just manscape him. <laughs> By the way, yeah, I, you, I, I've wanted one of those carts my whole life. Yeah, I know. I, that's what I'm saying. You should have one at the office. I want to get one to like go check the mail, take the trash to the top of the hill, <laughs> things like that. I have a golf cart, but it would be way better to have one of these. You have to take trash to the top of the hill there. They don't come down to your curb. That's right. It's got to wow. go uh, 
for a little hike, which is why I originally got a golf cart because you could hook one of those giant golf, uh, those giant green cans with some bungee uh-huh. cords and drag that motherfucker to the top of the hill. Wow. And the, and the real deal is I didn't mind doing it when it wasn't raining, but when it's raining or cold, fuck that. Why don't you call Clint just to come and do it for you or better yet. Now you got Silva or better yet. That can be part of the job of Chris McDonald. Chris McDonald ain't ever even coming down here, bro. Oh, he thinks he's not. Oh, I, like but I guess the, the border's closed right now, but when it opens, we're kidnapping his Canadian ass. He's, he's hitting home runs left and right. Is he not? Yes, he is. Uh, for those of you who watched the uh, latest living or L- life with Lois, uh, he worked on that. And again, just some, some subtle, some just small stuff he put on there just made it what it was. So. What's weird is he's got, you know, when you see his work, this big personality, and then you hang out with him in real life and he's like the most quiet, meek, yeah. mild mannered person ever. And you're like, where does all this. I guess it just lives in his head and he has to get in front of a keyboard to let it out. I guess so. Because when I first started talking to him, I, I gave him a lot of shit as I've been known to do. Well, especially in my group of friends, you just assume all oh, these motherfuckers are callous to it. They can take it. Yeah. And I would just give him shit and he would just smile. Yeah. And then you start to back off. You're like, oh, fuck, this isn't fun. I needed to. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money, it's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.